Hello, right now I'm going to introduce and further explain the topic of wave interference. I'm going to first explain with the example of water waves created by a drip. As you can see in this simulation, when the drop hits the water, it creates waves. But what are waves exactly? Waves are characterized by the motion associated with a disturbance or pulse that carries energy. And with those waves come various ways to measure them. For example, there's amplitude, which is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position, wavelength, which is the length of a wave measured from crest to crest, and frequency, which is the number of oscillations in a period of time. Now let's see how the waves are affected by changing different factors. And we're going to start with frequency. When the frequency, or drops per unit of time, increases, the wavelength decreases. And the opposite happens if I reduce the frequency. When I do that, the wavelength increases. When the amplitude increases, the dark bands get darker and the bright bands get brighter. This is because the distance from the equilibrium position is larger. And when the amplitude is decreased, the opposite happens. And everything just kind of fades and you can't really distinguish wave from wave. Now let's see what happens when we add a second drip. We can begin to see a weird pattern going on when the bands collide. This is called interference. And when waves interfere, there are areas of constructive interference, which is when waves combine to make larger waves, and areas of destructive interference, which is when the waves combine to make a smaller wave. And in this case, these bands right here represent areas of constructive interference, and this shadowy area represents destructive interference. Now we're going to switch over to light waves. Light waves travel faster than sound waves and are considered transverse. As the wavelength of the light is changed, the color also changes. So there is a wavelength for every color, but changing the amplitude doesn't give off a different color like changing the wavelength does. Now we're going to take a look at how light waves interact by introducing a second light source and a screen. Here we are clearly able to see interference taking place. Just like in the water waves, there are areas of destructive interference and areas of constructive interference. With light waves, areas of constructive interference create bright light, while areas of destructive interference create areas of darkness. Now let's introduce a slit and remove a light source. As you can see, the area in front of the slit is the brightest, and as the light gets further away from the slit, it gets darker. And if we move the slit closer to the light, it gets brighter because waves diffract when going through an opening. Now let's move the barrier back and make a second slit. Here we can see something similar occurring. We can see that the light directly in front of the slit as the brightest and the light furthest from the center as the darkest due to diffraction. But what happens when we increase the slit separation? When this happens, we can start to see a series of bright and dark fringes just behind the outer barrier. This is what was further explained by Young's experiment. He showed that when constructive and destructive interference occur through a slit, a fringe pattern like this one appears. So just like before, the dark bands are where destructive interference occur, and the light bands are where constructive interference occur. One additional factor to take into account when observing fringes created by a double slit barrier is wavelength. I'm going to demonstrate this by changing the wavelength to that of one associated with yellow light. Now I'll reduce the slit separation, and I'll ask that you just ignore the black areas as they're just a computer problem. So try to remember what this looks like before I switch over to blue light. Does this look different than before? That's because different wavelengths produce different separations between bright fringes. In the yellow light wavelength, the fringes were more separated, and now that we switch to blue light, the fringes are closer together due to a shorter wavelength. I hope you've learned more about wave interference with this video, and thank you for watching.